Thomas here in Belgium. Leiderkirche is the venue. This is the last event of two days of European Championship action. Fast, exciting, short circuit speed skating. So as we head off with the men's 5,000 meters, 45 laps. It'll be interesting to see what sort of tactics come into play here. Exactly the same rules as with the girls, but it's uh, just a few more laps. Well, it's another 2,000 meters. The Belgian team, very strong, I would have thought, in this event. Uh, Gert Blanchard, Alain de Reuter, Gert de Jong, and Frankie Van Huren, and they've got a substitute, a Stefan Guigen. The Italians, though, they've been everywhere in this two days with Razio Fagoni, Roberto Peretti, Mirko Villeman and Diego Catani. Their substitute is Hugo Herrenhoff. The Dutch team, well, there's only one Velzeboer in this one, Mark Velzeboer, Jan Hugevin, Eric Dufelshoff, Jeroen Otter and Richard Soit. And the British team, headed up by Willie O'Reilly. And uh, then we haven't seen some of the others, I can tell you about, Nicky Gooch, 18-year-old from Barnes in London, fourth place uh, in the Europa Cup in 1989, and he got a gold medal in the 1,000 metres, bronze medal in the 5,000 metre relay in the World Championships. So uh, what a great hope he is. And then Matthew Jasper, 19 years of age, comes from Derbyshire. He's had 14 international appearances, and in the British Championships, he won the gold medal in 1991. And then we've got Stuart Horsepool, who you have seen, because we've only been showing semi-finals and finals. Uh, one or two of our skaters were left out at the semi-final stage. Stuart Horsepool is the old man of the team, 30 years of age, very experienced. Comes from Nottingham, family man with two kids. And then young Jamie Firm, still a student. And mixing it with the big boys here in Belgium. Right, let's have a look now at the action here. The Belgians, it was a funny old handover that was. But as the uh, Belgians go off, that's Gert de Jong chasing, chasing the Dutchman. And we move on to just 20 laps to go. And Mark Belzeboa looking a bit weary. It's a long distance, isn't it? 45 laps. And what a battle. The Belgians look as if they've only just started. And it's tremendous action from Gert Blanchard there, who's determined not to let the Dutch get away with this on his own Belgian territory. And the Dutch know they're being chased, the race is on, and the Italians are in third position. And look as if they're challenging the Belgians now. And you can be sure when Orazio Fagoni gets uh, onto the ice, he ain't giving in for anybody. He chases as hard as the fastest of them. This is Mirko Wieleman for Italy now. and. It's Holland, Italy, Belgium, and Great Britain are nowhere to be seen. So it's still Holland out there. Italy are now firmly in second place, and Belgium chasing so hard. A good shove as the Italian takes full advantage of the teamwork there, that is Orazio Fagoni, and you'll see some explosive stuff now. Fagoni looking a bit tired as he gives a push and pushing a shove to Mirko Willemann again. And you can see the United Kingdom is a long way out of this one. Just 10 laps left to go. And it's still Holland in the lead. But I must say that Italy now are so close that all of that effort the Dutch have put in is to no avail. They're still not out of contact with each other. 
Another good changeover for the Italians. And the pace is then taken up by Orazio Fagoni again. Most experienced skater on the Italian team. And they're doing lap for lap now. As he hands over to Roberto Peretti. And Peretti actually moves in front. Whoa! And Holland goes off. So now, th now this looks like he tags him and carries on. But uh, that'll be real mix-up for the books as we first, first Junior Jack I've seen for about 10 laps. So the Netherlands are virtually out of it. And we now see the Union Jack chasing Italy, which is a nice sight to see. So out there is Diego Catani. Uh, Belgium in second and the United Kingdom in third place. And that is Alain de Reuter, who's just overtaken. There's all sorts of hustling and bustling going on here. And he, a big trip there. Once again, one of those funny little plastic markers tripping up one of the skaters, the Italian skater. One lap left to go. And Belgium absolutely powering through. And as they cross the line, <laughs> It looked like Belgium. The Italians absolutely shattered. Put everything they've got into it. They chased from the word go. And you see we manage a third place there. And poor old Holland, after leading for nearly all the way round, go back into fourth. But that's the name of the game and a very, very popular win for Belgium in this 5,000-metre men's relay. And they really put some effort into that. Now, this is where the problem started. There goes one of those puck things again. There's going to be a lot to be said about that. Uh, really doesn't seem to be a very satisfactory way. Maurizio Fagoni, the main anchor man for the Italians, goes out. But the crowd loving this event and cheering their own Belgian team. So, for the girls, the overall standings for the European equivalent of the championships, Europa Cup 92, Marinella Canclini is the new European champion. Second, Belzebara, Vlasova, third. Pinton's fourth, Alaglova fifth, and Belzebara, sixth, Simone. Well, for the men, good news for Great Britain. No great surprise as Wilf O'Reilly tops the podium there ahead of his great rival, Gert Blanchard, and Italy get the bronze, but Wilf O'Reilly is the European champion. Add that to his 1991 World Championship title and his two gold medals from Calgary, surely he's one of our greatest gold medal hopes in the up-and-coming Olympics. European Championships 1992. Winner, Willie O'Reilly. Well done to Willie. From me, Peter Noyce Thomas, we hope you enjoyed this exciting short track speed skating. We'll see you next time around. Bye for now. for the final lap and he's just got a hundred meters to skate and it'll be a gold medal for Great Britain and O'Reilly one bend and there's no one can get near him he's absolutely destroyed them he's here tonight the world speed skating champion Wilf O'Reilly <laughs> fantastic and these are the very skates. These are the skates I did it on as well. They're the ones that you won the world championship on. And the one we've just seen. That was the Olympics. That's right. But it was a trial thing four That's years right. ago. And now it's for real. Now it's for real. And you're real. expected to win again. I know, the, the, the pressure's amazing. You see, when Torval and Dean, as it were, packed it in, we lost the chances of gold medals and, or any kind of medals, really, at, wow. the, at the Winter Olympics. And you, you're, the, you're our big white hope, aren't you? Well, that's a, that's a matter of opinion. I think most people have, have put me up there as, as the big hope for gold. You're not going to talk yourself down now, are you, Wilf? Come on. We uh, want optimism here. We're not going to get a medal unless you win it. I wouldn't say that. I would say that, obviously, I'm going to go out there as possibly favourite for the gold. I'm the world champion. And uh, I'm going to go out there and have such a good time. 
and hopefully... No, don't have a good time. Well, don't have a good time. Win, <laughs> win. Well, no, I think in order to win, you have to have a good time. No, you don't. Yeah, You've absolutely. You've got to concentrate and win. On the day of the race, you'll be concentrating, but in between, you, you have to have a good time. No, I don't have to tell you anyway, because I think you're pretty well motivated. I mean, do you gear yourself up, work yourself up into a kind of mental state that you have to win? I think one thing that most people don't know is actually hate training. Yeah? Yeah, training's a real boring. How long do you train then? Four or five hours a day. Um, the, the key issue, though, is that I prefer or I like winning a lot better than losing. Yeah. And that's why I do that immense amount of training. Yeah. And the training, I mean, we ought to say this is the sprint. And it's the first time in the Olympics that the sprint. How long is the sprint? Well, we will be skating over the 1,000 metres in Alberville on the 18th and 22nd. How long do you do? Uh, how long does it take? Sorry, uh, just over a minute and a half. Yeah. So how fast are you going? We would reach speeds of somewhere about 30, 35 mile an hour. Yeah, fantastic. And is it dangerous? I mean, these things are sharp. Obviously, they have to be to cut through the ice. Well, they're not that sharp. I mean, most people think they're sort of knife sharp. Yeah, but, don't um, keep doing that. You'll injure yourself before the game. <laughs> <laughs> but um, very much like skiing, you have edges on the in inside edge and the outside edge. But it's immensely skillful. You're, you've got to take those corners so sharply. It, it, you, don't, you don't see any danger in it. There obviously is a, a, an element of danger, but I think most people would, uh, would agree, anybody that's good at what they do, minimize the risk of danger. How did, you, how did you become so good at this? I mean, it's not a natural sport for, for a Briton, is it? Right. I, I, I started figure skating and uh, through the pressures, I think, of, of, of financial problems. Then, uh, and speed skating was a, a, ne a cheaper sport to take up, if you like. And it, it, it progressed from there. Yeah. Have you got enormous hams? Hams. What are hams? I thought hams. No, it's because I've got very big hams. But I wouldn't have hams like you. No, they're quads, Terry. Oh, they're quads? They're quads. Where are the hams? Yeah. No, the I hams, ask. The hams, I know where the hams are. The hams are, are at yes. the back. Let's not talk about the hams right. then. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, this is where your power comes That's from. That's right. I mean, most people sort of, when they, whenever they first see me, they say, are you Wilfred Wright? I say, yeah. They say, well, we were expecting this guy that was sort of like this big and this wide. And I say, no, no, but for short track speed skating, you need to be a little bit smaller and a little bit cuter just to get around the corners. But the, lo the longer distance ones which we've seen, fellas like Eric Hyden, who won, yeah. I don't know, five, six gold medals. Five. Enormously big guys, huge, huge legs. Yeah. And skin-tight outfits. Well, we, we wear the skin-tight outfits Good man. as well. But <laughs> just, um, you don't care, do you? No, no, absolutely not. No. But we just cover a few other things up, like we wear a crash yes, helmet, quite, gloves yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> Where do you wear the crash helmet? Oh, yes. On the head, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Are you... Are you sort of anyway disappointed that Eddie the Eagle isn't going to be with you this year? I, I think that's cruel. They've banned him. Well, no, I think, I think it'd be really nice if he was going to come out and watch me. But uh, obviously, if he's there, I think it'll be, it'll be nice to see him there. Yeah. I don't agree whether, whether or not he should be competing. I think most Olympic athletes have to achieve a standard to compete. Mm. Myself and the other six, five guys that are going to do the speed skating, Joanne Conway in the figure skating, and the bobsleigh guys and the Martin Bell, etc. So we've all had standards to meet. Actually, we've got a bit of a chance. Joanne Conway's got a chance, and so has the bobsleigh fellas have a chance. Absolutely, I yeah. think. So we might come away with more than one gold, one more medal, one more than one gold medal, in fact. Well, definitely, I think that, that the um, the team's going to go out there, obviously, to do their best, and I hope with a little bit of luck of the Irish and a prayer here or there. You're never Irish with a name like O'Reilly. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> where, where did the Wilf come from? Well, it's actually Wilfred, and it's sort of been shortened down. It's been Willie and Will and a few yeah. other things, but we won't say that on here. Well, now, there's not... I know it's a, it's a familiar complaint with a lot of sports here, but you actually don't train here, do you? No, I spend, I've spent more or less the last six months in Holland, where, in fact, it's their national sports speed skating. So, um, A, the facilities... I wouldn't say the facilities are much better, which is normally the, the general comment, because we have 48 ice rinks in this country, except they keep knocking them down every now and again, like Richmond That's right, they just like closed that. one, yeah. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> the facilities we have here to do speed skating, the problem is he's actually getting the time to skate, and obviously that the quality of ice is very important as well. Uh, didn't I see somewhere that you could train here, but they'd only allow you between one and two in the morning or something? I've done that. <laughs> I've, but I've had to overcome all those problems to, uh, to 
you know, become world champion, European champion. You use the same muscles as cyclists, don't you? I mean, roughly, you're developed the same way as a cyclist, big, big muscles here. Yeah. You, you have ambitions in that direction, too? Well, I'd like to, after, uh, after the Olympics and after the World Championships in, in Denver, try to make out for the Barcelona Because Eric Hayden is a cyclist as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's now, your big inspiration is your mother, and I'm delighted you went up to Birmingham and dragged her down here unwillingly. Is she with us in the audience? Where's Wilf's mum? Give us a wave, mum. Give us a wave, mum. <laughs> Where's she hiding? She's over there. Where's your mother gone? Where is she? She's been very quiet. There she is. Where? Over there. My, oh, there she is, down there the bottom. Don't be so shy, Mr. O'Reilly. He owes it all to you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us, and thank you too, Wilf. It's thank nice you very to much. See you. Thank you. Wilf O'Reilly. And good luck. Hope it goes well.